Hello everyone, today we're going to be going to take a look at the Retron 1 AV in an NES clone console by Hyperkin here. So let's just go ahead and get right into this unboxing. All right, and first of all, I gotta say, look at this color. I mean, this is just, this is just beautiful. I'm a big fan of this kind of style with the, the, the teals and the, the purples, the turquoises, the um, uh, magentas, you know, they all, they all look good here. So I did notice that the controller style is not like the classic that we just took a look at by old school uh, it's got just a power and reset button here so there's that and then going further we'll take a look here and this is more than likely the controller i'm gonna tear this up a little bit so i apologize and we've got a controller in a similar scheme here so we've got the hyperkin scout and looking at this they do have the cord on the side here just like the other Classic NES controller, but that's all right. I like the way it's tapered down here, and the big thing that I love about these is these bumps on the back. Uh, that is that is super comfortable for holding the controller, and yeah, definitely a fan of that. So we're going to go ahead and set that off to the side here. And then last but not least, at the bottom of the box, we've got our cables that are included with it as well. So what I thought was interesting is that unlike the Classic, this only comes with one controller. It comes with just a standard AV for uh, just audio for mono and then video which I thought was interesting if we take a quick look back here. It only does have the one of each. And not only does it just come with that, but it also only has the cable. It does not include the power adapter for this, which is pretty interesting. So take that into account when you're buying one of these. All right, and just like last time, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at four NES games. We've got Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt here to make sure that the zapper gun works as well. Batman, because the last one that was an NOAC had some audio problems with this one, so let's see if this one does too. We've got Rad Racer again, and then of course the powerhouse Dracula's Curse Castlevania 3. So we're gonna go ahead and see how these run on this system here. Let me go ahead and get it hooked up and we'll take a look. All right, first up we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Super Mario Brothers here. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this one. Now remember last time the audio was super tinny and the screen might flash a little bit, just a little bit of a heads up. So we're gonna go ahead and start running with this right now. Let's turn this up. It sounds good. It's not too bad. It's actually, it actually feels like it's a little louder than last time. So yeah, it looks good, sounds good. It could be because it's just mono as opposed to being dual mono, so that might be part of the reason. But yeah, overall, it sounds pretty good, looks pretty good. Let's see how the coins sound. Coins are a little sharp still, but again, not too bad. Let's go ahead and finish up the level here. This controller, though, is is wonderful. This is this this right here is such a game changer. Like, wow, that is that is comfortable. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Duck Hunt. Okay, we've got Duck Hunt going here now, so let's go ahead and see if this works just like before. All right, yeah, easy peasy. First shot, not a problem. And again. And one more time, why not? All right, Duck Hunt works. That's good. Just like before, too, we're going to see if it's difficult to pull this out or not. So, yeah, not too bad. The other one was a little easier. I will say that I demoed this just a little less than the other one, but still holds on to them well, but it's not impossible to get out. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Batman, just like before, see if this one has any audio problems. And turning it on, let's see how it does. Let's get right over this part. Oof. Oh, sounding sharp. Yeah, you can hear it skipping just like before. It's a bummer. Alright, well, it looks good. It looks like it's supposed to, so there's that. But the sound, again, is just, it's not good. Alright, let's move on to the next one. We've got Rad Racer in, so let's go ahead and put, turn this one on and see how this one does. See, maybe turning down that brightness helps a little bit. Let's do the Twin Turbo this time. Sounds just as like it's supposed to. It's 
Yep. So Rat Racer is a go. Looks good too. Fun little game here. 3D. Yep. Alright, so Rad Racer's fine. Looks like we're seeing a similar pattern than last time as well. So yeah, nice. Let's go ahead and take a look here at what Castlevania 3 is going to do. I'm going to guess it's going to perform pretty close to what the classic game was like. Oof. I don't know if you can hear that, but not good. Got the same glitching, too. I'm guessing these are the same exact NO, uh, NOACs, just, yeah. And it sounds terrible. Like, woof. Yeah. I don't think we really need to see much more of this one, either. What a bummer. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Just like before, you can see that it's got four screw holes on the bottom, which makes me think this is going to be a very similar system on a chip. We're going to go ahead and open this up. I already have it unscrewed. And it actually has a little bit more wiggle room this time. And yeah, that looks almost like the same board, same situation here. It's just a cheap little chip. This LED is all the way up there, though. There's actually a slot inside of here you have to make sure it fits into. But yeah, uh, you know, simple little chip here. Again, I'm not going to go ahead and take that off because what's the point? These are just cheap little retro duplicates here. So let's go ahead and see if we can fit this back in. And there we go. Puts back together pretty easy. So, when it comes down to it, do I recommend the system? For the system itself, no. I don't recommend it for this. But, the good news is, you can get this down anywhere to $14 for the basic gray one. I paid $17 for this whole setup here. And while that might seem pricey for a system that I don't want to keep, the good news is, is that I love this controller. I think this controller is fantastic. I've actually used it for, I'd say, about four to five hours already with my regular NES, and I just, I can't get enough of it. The little nubs here at the end that are uh, angled down is great, and these on the back just really, I mean, it's, it's crazy, but like, you can anchor your fingers underneath, and it's just so much more comfortable. So yeah, definitely something that I like about it. I paid $17 for this, and I think that what I'm going to do, honestly, is I'm going to keep it for the controller. It'll be nice to have this as a backup. Maybe if a friend wants an extra console or they have a couple NES games they want to play. Or maybe I'll just see if a local game store will take it. But really, I just want it for the controller at this point. I do know that I've seen some other YouTubers claim you can get the gray versions down to $14. And that's just a dollar or two over the gray version of this controller. Uh, I actually didn't end up keeping the classic end that I had either because it had no redeeming factors. Like, this one might have a bad console, but at least has a great controller. Those controllers were not that good, and the console itself was not good either. So yeah, I might pay a few dollars extra for the aesthetic, but at the end of the day, I'm happy with the controller. It was fun testing this out, and if I have a friend who wants the system to play a couple NES games, then sure, why not? So yeah, I just want to say thanks so much for watching the review. I really appreciate it. If you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button, I'm going to be taking a look at a couple other classic things and other retro items around here and there. And one of the next things that I want to take a look at here is a controller that I've really been having some fun with uh, by the people over at Retro Fighters. So yeah... Big fan of Sega Genesis as well, and this controller here is definitely something I want to talk about. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see the next video, and thanks, have a good day!